Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about how to write a cause effect paper in this video. Specifically, I'm just going to go over the types of steps that you might want to take before you write a cause effect paper and also show you what one looks like and the type of structure you might want to use for a cause effect paper. So cause effect writing is really common writing and it's not just in English classes, it's in everything we do, even just emails to friends or something. We focus a lot on the causes of things, the reasons for why they happen, as well as the effects that they have on us, our friends, our society, our neighborhood. Cause and effect writing is everywhere. When you're asked to write a cause effect paper, you might be asked to write about the causes of something and the effects of it. But you also might just be asked to write about the effects of something or the causes of something. Okay. And I'm going to show you in this video, just a simple example of running. Cause I always like to use running in my, my examples. It's a, I feel like it's a simple topic, not too heavy and then um, and it's easy to see the structures that um, we can use in this type of paper. Um, so I'm going to first uh, advise that if you have to write a cause effect paper that you really think about the topic first. Just make sure you understand what you're going to be writing about, what you need to write about and also take a look at the issue that you need to write about and really look to see what has caused it. And there's probably more than one, right? So like if you're thinking about running, you know, running is something you do. Running is something I do. Well, why? What caused that for me? It's not just one thing. There's many things, right? And then you want to look at the effects of that thing. So what are some of the effects of that thing? Like for in this example, running, what are the effects of running in my life? And those could be health, those could be all kinds of things. So you want to take some time and go through some sort of brainstorming to get ideas about the topic. Okay. So I have here on this handout something that I found online. It's just a little graphic organizer where you could put the topic in the middle and then you put on one side different causes for that topic. And then on the other side, different effects that are a result of that um, topic in the middle, okay? And you can add way more uh, than what it gives you. This is just an example of a, one that could help you. It's just a place where you can start and get some ideas. Once you got those ideas, you don't need to keep them all. You can get rid of the ones that you think aren't good or make no sense or aren't related. You know, you're gonna need to sift through it all and keep the ones that you really wanna focus on. And if you're going to talk about causes and effects, that's fine. A lot of papers ask you to do that, uh, but you don't always have to discuss causes and effects unless your assignment requires that you do that. Sometimes you just need to talk about the causes. So maybe when you do your brainstorming, you realize you have more causes than effects. Then write about the causes. You obviously have more to say. But maybe you see after doing that brainstorm that you have way more effects for the topic you're talking about. Well, then write about the effects and not the causes. OK, but here, let's look at a type of, um, you know, organizational structure for a cause effect paper. So when you're writing cause and effect, when you're thinking cause effect, um, you can look at the body of your essay or body of a paragraph, right, where you're developing your ideas in this way. The first one is called the block, the block method. OK, and the block method basically has you in one block focus on the causes, okay, of the issue you're talking about. And then you transition at some point in your paper to the effects of that issue. What are the effects? And that's the second block. So you might have one paragraph focusing on the causes and one paragraph focusing on the effects. Or maybe you're writing a 10 page paper. You might have five pages focusing on the causes and five pages focusing on the effects. You can make this block structure work for any length of a paper, even if it's just one paragraph, one book, <laughs> whatever it is. And then the other one is the chain <clears throat> method. Okay. And this is where you're kind of connecting cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect, all the way throughout your paper. It could be in one paragraph, where you do cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect. It could be an essay, it could be a book, okay? So that's it. When my students write cause, effect papers, I don't even 
They don't really use either of these. They are in some way, but not, not so much. They're, what they're doing is they're usually, I ask them to just focus on one thing, like what are the causes of this thing, right? Or what are the effects of this thing? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a sample of a cause effect paper that does just focus on effects. In this case, it's just on effects, okay? So here we go. All right, so here's a sample cause effect paper. It's called Running as Medicine. As I sat up in bed, staring at the walls in the dark room for the third night in a row, I made a decision to do something about the stress that was causing my anxiety. The next day, I decided to go on a light run. What happened as a result of that run has helped me in many ways. Although running can't be a cure for everyone's health issues, it's an effective way to manage health. Now I'm going to stop there and just point out this is the intro paragraph. Let's imagine this is a five paragraph essay. This is just a simple, not a great example. It's a good, you know, it has a hook, it has some connecting info, and it has a thesis. It's an okay um, paragraph here for intro. Here we have, here we have the hook. Here we have some connecting info that connects to the thesis. And here we have the thesis. The thesis, remember, is the main point you're trying to make in your paper, which is, although running can't be a cure for everyone's health issues, it is an effective way to manage health. That's the thesis. So now throughout this paper, I'm looking to see what the effects of running are. Because remember, this paper is going to discuss the effects of running. One major effect running can have on a person is stress relief. Because most of us have busy schedules and limited time, it's easy to have a buildup of stress over time. That stress can manifest itself in our bodies in different ways. And one such way is through anxiety attacks. It's well known that ex exercise and fitness can help a person manage stress. And running on a regular basis can result in a reduction of stress and anxiety. To be specific, I was experiencing some anxiety due to a change in my job. I decided to run three times in one week, and as a consequence of this, I was able to sleep at night for longer periods and do my job without a tight knot in my chest. It is because of this hobby that many others experience similar stress reduction. So I'm going to stop here and just point out this is my first body paragraph that discusses the first effect of running on my health. Okay, and you can see that it's going to focus on that in the topic sentence, which I'm going to highlight right here. The topic sentence is the main point of the paragraph, and that topic sentence needs to be developed throughout the paragraph. Okay, so everything that comes under here should be really developing, explaining, and supporting that topic sentence about, um, you know, I have some supporting points, um, which really kind of start um here okay this is my main supporting point that i'm trying to bring out and then here i have really i get more specific i get really specific and you want to add details and examples that are specific to your paper otherwise it's not memorable and it's not clear to the reader if you're not specific because they're not in your head they don't know what you're talking about so sometimes you just need to be really specific Next paragraph, next benefit. Another positive benefit or effect that running can have on a person, person's health is the ability to focus on that task at hand more attentively. So there's my next point that I'm going to develop, my next effect of running. Most people experience highs and lows throughout the day, and coffee or food can help temporarily, but eventually energy goes away and becomes blurred. Running, however, can help a person's energy level stay elevated throughout the day, which results in better attention to detail. That's my point I'm trying to make here. For instance, this is where I get specific. For instance, before I started running, at 2 o'clock each day, I became lethargic at my work and would make many mistakes. Afterwards, however, I started to notice that I wouldn't get tired until right before dinner and my work had much fewer mistakes in it. So here's my specific example to illustrate and explain that point that I'm making there. A final, my last body paragraph, a final advantage or effect to running is that it forces the runner to go outside and breathe some fresh air. 
So that's my last point, my last effect. This is important because vitamin D comes from being outside and the benefits of that vitamin are endless. One such benefit is that of our moods. I found that after one month of running outside three times a week, I started my days more enthusiastically than before. I waved to more people on the streets and had cheerful small talk with neighbors. Being outside also gives runners the chance to forest bathe if the running is done on trails. In my case, this is true. I run through small streams of water, let the leaves along the trail brush my face, and smell the dirt and flowers along the way. Having an elevated mood is directly related to being one with nature through this type of forest bathing. Okay, so here I actually have two really good, strong supporting points that I'm going to make about the effects of running. Um, in that, you know, being outside develop, helps us with our moods, okay? And I give an example of how I started feeling better after I started running outside. And then the second thing about being outside is that it gives you the chance to forest bathe. And then I give an example of doing that here with the smells and the touch and all that. Okay, so now I'm going to read the concluding paragraph. In the end, it is undeniable that running has benefits that reach far and wide for those who partake in the activity. These effects reduce stress and anxiety, help with more focus and attention to detail, and provide a person the chance to be one with nature outdoors. It's no wonder I don't let anything interfere with my weekly runs. Okay, so in this paragraph here, um, we have a restatement of the thesis, right? Right here at the beginning, okay? And then I actually go in and list all of the points that I made in the paragraph right here. So this is kind of like restating and summarizing the points that I made in the in the paragraph, I mean in the essay. And then here I kind of end with an end hook, like something fun, something to remember, something to take away. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so now um, that is one example of a paper that doesn't have any research. It's all based first person, you know. I think that's a good place to start when you're writing, you're just beginning to write essays. I think it's really good to write about yourself because you can gain confidence and make it easier for yourself to learn the structure and how to develop ideas when you have those ideas already within yourself. And then later you can go and start learning how to do research and adding outside sources and things like that. But I didn't add any of that in here. I used first person for this paper, which I do encourage my students to use. So I also want to point out some of the very useful transitions and connectors that you would want to use if you're writing a cause effect paper. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've highlighted in pink um, all those cause effect transitions and connectors that I recommend students use. Now, I don't think you should get caught up on these as you're writing or before you write. I think you should get your ideas out and then go back and try to add these connectors in to make your ideas flow together more coherently. So you can read through this um, and see all the different places where I used cause effect transitions and connectors. Okay, there's quite a few. And then here I have a list of those transitions and connectors that are very useful for cause effect writing. Okay, and um, I have another video actually, if you're not familiar with these types of transitions and connectors for cause effect writing, there is another video on a tip how you can use them uh, and, and start to get familiar with them so that you can use them in your own writing. Okay, but I really do think that it helps to read through examples too. All right, and that is it. So good luck on your paper and bye-bye.